we're here today to talk about Markdown, and it's a fantastic way to create documents, whether that's technical documentation or user documentation, whatever it may be. I think it's super dynamic and great tool to have in your tool set for sure. So what we'll talk about today, the agenda, I'll give you an introduction to Markdown. So I'll tell you what it is, how it sort of works, and some common uses for it. And then we'll go over some syntax to just show you how to write Markdown. And I basically have that as a list of some of the most commonly used pieces of Markdown, but then we'll jump into, when we get into examples a little later, we'll jump in and actually show you what it looks like when Markdown is rendered. I'll share with you some resources and then we'll take some questions and answers. So start with an introduction, right? So I think the genesis of this was working with Sherry and Mia and Ashley on some internal documentation on best practices and happen to bring up the fact that Markdown would be a really good tool to use here because it's not super static like a Word document would be. You can change it up really easily and then you can export it to all sorts of different formats. And so I think the consensus was it was a, a great tool and that was really where I found out that a whole lot of people didn't know about Markdown. So anyway, Markdown is a lightweight markup language that you can use to add structure and formatting elements to plain text documents. So it's like HTML, but it's specifically for documents. You can apply styles to it just like you can HTML and have it come out different, you know, looking different based on the styles you apply to it. But ultimately what it is, is just a way to decorate your text with markup so that it renders a specific way. It's not markup like you think, like HTML where you have tags or like XML where you have tags. There's keys or characters that you use to say something should be an element. And I'll show you that whenever we get into it. So anyway, with what you see is what you get. Editors like Microsoft Word, you know, you click buttons to apply formatting, markdown. It's the actual text that determines how the words and phrases should look. So super dynamic. Easy to edit, I should say. Why use markdown? Markdown is platform independent. So if you have any text editor, you can write markdown. You can create it on any device running any operating system. It is portable. So files containing markdown formatted text can be opened in any text editor. Now, a caveat to that, not all text editors show you what that markdown renders to. Some do, and I'll show you one that does, but you can write markdown anywhere you can write text because all it is is a text file with a .md or .markdown extension. If you don't like the editor you're currently using, just open it in a different editor. Markdown is future-proof. So even if the application you're using stops working at some point in the future, you'll still be able to reach your markdown formatted text in any text editor. So if your text editor goes away, it doesn't matter. You can use it anywhere that you're editing text. Okay, how does it work? I mean, this is a very quick rundown of how it works. This isn't exactly everything. But I'm, hopefully at the end of this session, you'll understand more how it works. So markdown formatted text is stored in a plain text file that has an MD or markdown extension. Once a document is created, a markdown tool can be used to convert the markdown to HTML or some other file format like PDF. So it can then be displayed in its full glory. I'm going to show you Visual Studio Code and the, the tools available in Visual Studio Code. But there's also some web-based markdown editors that allow you to see the results right away. All right, syntax. So you got to kind of compare markdown with HTML. It was built with the same idea in mind that, you know, HTML defines what something looks like. Markdown defines what something looks like as well. So a lot of the things in Markdown, that, well, they'll have an equivalent element in HTML. So just like you have H1 through H6 for your different headings in HTML, this is how you would write your different headings in Markdown. So it's just hashtag space heading and, the, you know, whatever text you want for your heading. I'll show you how that renders here in a few. Note at the bottom, and you're going to see this quite a few times because the way that it's written is very important because the markdown tool that, that will render the markdown is looking for very specific things. So like the space here between the hashtags and the heading text is 100% required because if you put them together, it's going to render it just as a hashtag heading rather than applying the styles that it should apply for an H1 or anything through an H6. Paragraphs, these are really simple. <laughs> they don't have any markup. It's just regular text. So anytime you type regular text in Markdown, it's going to render as a paragraph would in HTML. Line breaks can be a little tricky. So you'll see this better whenever we get into the actual editor, but there's two spaces after this 
here, this is the first line. And that indicates you want to move to the next line, okay? That's one way. You could be more explicit and put an actual break, an HTML break element in there. That's the preferred way for me. That's preferred way I do it because this can be a little confusing and not all text editors will show you that there's two spaces there unless you grab the line and capture the line. I'll show you very clearly in the editor, you know, why that's important. Emphasis. So if you want to bold some text in line with some other text, it's just as easy as putting two asterisks on either side of that text that you want to bold. Very simple. Italic is even easier. Put one asterisk on either side. And then bold and italic, you would put your three asterisks on either side. So very, very simple stuff here. And I mean, see how easy it is to go in and decide you want to, you know, take every time you have a specific word in all of your text, you want to make it bold. You would just search for it, grab that item, and then replace it with new, you know, new text with the two asterisks on either side. And you've just bolded all of that word in your document. Okay, so ordered lists are exactly as you would probably expect them to be, where you type in a number dot space and then the actual list item. Unordered lists are the same, use an asterisk. It'll actually allow you to use an asterisk or a dash, and there's some other, a few other. I think asterisk makes the most sense because it looks like a bullet, and that's how it ends up rendering in most of the markdown engines. And you do have to have that space. So again, that note is there saying you, you have to have that space. You can use a combination of the two as well. So under the first ordered list, if I wanted to, you know, between the one and the two, if I wanted to add an unordered list item, I can do that very easily just by adding a bullet and indenting the item underneath that first item. All right, links. These are really cool because these are super easy to set up. So it basically creates an anchor for you, a element as you would in, in HTML. And there's two things you could do here. So Internal to the document, assuming you're using some sort of headings, like we showed in the first slide, the H1 through H6, you can go to any of those headings simply. So, so the first part of the word or the first part of the link that's going to actually show as a hyperlink text is the, the piece that you see here in the brackets. So this link is going to say back to the top, but then behind the scenes, the actual hyperlink is going to a header, an H1 header with docket that, that is named document heading with hyphens. Now, these hyphens are added in here as part of the link, but they're not in the word itself. And it, it'll become more clear whenever I show you in the, the editor how that works. But very easily, you can you know, add back to top all throughout your document and put your title header in here. And you're gonna have all these little buttons for back to the top throughout your document if you have a really long document. External website. The same, so the word that you want to go, this is actually a phrase, so use this link to go to, and you can see the what I want to be the hyperlink I put in brackets, and then www.google.com, that is the address. All right, this is the coolest part of Markdown, and one of the reasons I think is best for documentation. It's because we can do code blocks and code super easy, okay? So what you see in the first part here, the block, is three ticks, tick, 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 a space JS, and then it's enclosed in three more ticks after your code block. So this prime example of this, if you've been to GitHub and you've looked at Git repositories, their readme files are all done in Markdown. So when you go in and like, let's say you look at Airbnb's documentation, you know, they have their own APIs and documentation on GitHub. Well, they have a readme when you go to their Git repository and there's tons of code in there in that readme, you know, tons of code examples. And all of those are done as blocks here in Markdown. This is not something you can easily do in Word or any other text editor, you know, traditional text editor, which is why it's so useful here in Markdown. So I give it the language, which is JavaScript. So we can use JS for short, but not all languages have a short like this one does for JS. But you tell it the language that you want to highlight, the syntax, and it's with the three ticks like this. And then everything you put in between is going to render as code in a nice little block to indicate that it's code. The inline piece is just as easy to use. So if I'm writing some portion of documentation and I want the reader to know that what I have just mentioned is a function that is part of this documentation, that I just put a tick on either side of that name and it will automatically make it a text that looks like code. So like Consolas or different markdown renderers will use different font, but it all looks like 
code font. And most of the times it'll put a little block around it too, to indicate that it's actually a, a code block. Okay, so on to resources and then we'll get on to the fun stuff where I can actually show you what this stuff looks like. Resources, so where I got most of my information here, because you do have to look these things up, even though I've been using this for a couple of years, is the markdown guide, this first piece. So it's really great. It's got all sorts of examples. It's got, you know, explanations for everything, origins of markdown, links to other places, all that. And then John Gruber's markdown documentation, I mentioned that there because that's the actual creator of markdown and he has his own documentation site, a little more technical. I don't care for it as much as I do the markdown guide, but it's there. Markdown tutorial walks you through step-by-step -step of creating a markdown document. So that one's really great as well. Awesome markdown, I haven't really looked at, but I hear a lot about it. Too many things to look at here, right? So just another resource you could go check out. And then Dillinger is one of those online markdown editors. It allows you to type markdown in a left pane and in the right pane, you can see what the rendered markdown is going to look like. So really awesome. Cool, so that's resources. Now we will move on to some examples. Okay, so I've got side by side here. This was Dillinger, what I was just talking about. I'll show you that here in a few. I wanna show you what we've got in Visual Studio Code here first. Okay, so I created with all the slides that we just went through with all the examples that I showed you, I created a markdown file for each just to show you what they look like in actual markdown. So for instance, here's the headings piece that I showed you. It's got an actual heading that says this is the headings page. So that's not actually one of the headings that I wanted to list. But what's cool here is with Visual Studio Code, when you have a markdown file, you also get this little icon here, which allows you to open up a preview off to the side of what your markdown is going to look like. There we go. That happened automatically. Okay. So this is the preview. This is the actual markdown. Now, what you see over here is not how all markdown is going to look. This is a specific flavor of markdown that Visual Studio uses for giving us an example of a rendering. So it uses a specific set of CSS to display everything. You can get all sorts of different CSS from online that you could apply to a markdown document, or you can create your own. The one that's used by Get is or Get is a really good one. And I'll show you, there's a, an extension that I have here in Visual Studio Code that allows me to export to HTML really easily, and it applies the style automatically. So I'll show you that whenever we're at the end here. I highly recommend it. I'll actually go in and set the setting up to automatically generate HTML every time we save a document too. Okay, so here's our headings. Like I said, heading one, two, three. This is how each one would render in your actual document whenever everything's said and done. Very useful. Again, these, the tool that I'm going to show you here in Visual Studio Code allows you to add a table of contents automatically. And that table of contents is based on these headings. So you want to use these headings every chance you can because headings are like a waypoint within your document that allow you to link to them, but they're also part of that table of contents. Okay. So one through six paragraphs, again, super easy. So we have our header here, just saying what the page is and that renders as a, as the header of the entire page. I then have a H2 paragraphs showing you that this is paragraph one, this is paragraph two, line break. So like I told you before, there's two spaces here, which indicates a line break. If we take this, and take one of these spaces out, it all runs on one line, right? Which is why that one is difficult, which is why I prefer to use the break because you, you start to, you know, you don't realize that the space isn't there, the, the space that you think is there isn't there and just hitting enter doesn't do anything unless you've hit enter twice, but then that puts an extra space in between. That actually makes two paragraph elements is what it does rather than just putting you on a new line. So since everything ultimately gets rendered through HTML anyway, it allows you to use some limited HTML elements like the break element that allow you to move from line to line if you wanted to keep it all within the same paragraph. Emphasis, oh, I, and this one is one I didn't mention in the first document, but just three little dashes like this give you a line to help separate out your content. So really useful. And those can actually be asterisks, it can be multiple, it can be more than three, but it's a minimum of three. I like the dashes because I like to make the left side look as readable as the right side, but not as pretty, right? It's never gonna be as pretty, 
but to make it as readable so that if I don't have it rendered, I still know what's going on in my document. All right, so bold is the two asterisks, so you can see it's bolded, italics, like we showed you before, and then the bold and italic. Okay, lists. Again, these will render just like an ordered list or an unordered list would in HTML. We have our H2 here for ordered lists and then unordered lists and then one, two, three, four. And to add to that, so in your markdown, it automatically auto renumbers it for you if you wanted to add a fifth item, but not all editors do that. So if it doesn't, all you have to do is, you know, add the number dot, but there has to be that space in between the numbering and the actual item. And same thing with the unordered list. And so here too, now it doesn't recommend that you do a mixture like this, but you can do a dash and do a fifth element uh, item. And you see it treats it sort of as a, well, this specific renderer treats that as a separate list because it's a different item, but some don't. Some of them treat them as the same one, which is why they tell you to keep them consistent because depending on what's rendering your markdown, it may display a little bit differently. Links, okay. I really love the links. Okay, so again, internal to document, I've created this move to top link. If we scoot down just a little bit to where we can barely see move to top and then hit move to top, it brings us up to the top because I've told it links is where I want this to go. Which remember, any header or heading, H1 through H6, if you put it in the internal link like this, so if this is set to links for this page rather than links, you would have to make this links for this page, right? And now when we do it again and move to top, it moves us to links for this page. So you're just replacing your spaces with dashes is all you're doing for your headers. So it's that easy. I'll get rid of that. If I try to do it again now here with after I've changed it, it's not gonna move me anywhere because it can't find anything called links. So again, everything within this block here is a block of code. I can put whatever I want in there. You know, multiple functions can be documented here. I can give examples of how to call a function multiple times all in one block, and it's super, super easy to create. And it automatically, you know, highlights it, gives you syntax highlighting. So it shows the comment here is green, the function is blue, the return is blue. And again, depending on your renderer, those may show up a little bit different. So there's definitely some renderers out there that show those colors in more detail and more syntax highlighting than what you see here. A string is one too. So, you know, if I say rather than return process, but I say some string, you see that gets syntax highlighted as well here. And then again, inline. So if you're doing documentation, which I'll show you in the style guide, if you're doing documentation where you are, you know, a lot of times what you'll do is have a paragraph that describes the function that you're documenting. And it will say the whatever function, whatever that name is, does this, this, and this. Well, when you reference that function, you want it to be highlighted like this so that the user knows or the reader knows that you're actually talking about something that's not just regular text, right? And it can be easily picked out. And so you do that just with a tick around each one. Okay, cool. So that goes over everything. Like these are the basics, you know, this goes over the, the basics of Markdown, a document that I'm live using right now. Again, this is a style guide and it's a, definitely a work in progress. So I'm only using it as an example here, but just to show you sort of how things work here, right? We have a table of contents that the tool that I have in here automatically generated for me. It points to all the different headers that I have within the document. So I can go to any of them. If I want to go to variables, I just click variables. Each section, you go back to the top, each section has a title, has some sort of write up on what's going on the item that we're looking at, and then has some sort of code documentation to show you how they would do it or how you would do it in the code. So doing this in Word, I don't even want to think what it would take, right? Because doing a block like this is creating a table and taking, you know, taking that table or that element, whatever it may be, and doing heavy formatting to it to make it what you want it to be. And all that sort of happens automatically here in Markdown. So it's perfect for this use case for documentation arrays, which y'all know I love. So, and at the end of each of the section, we have the back to the top. So it scoot us right back up to the top. So very useful. So I used this for one of our customers who had a really, really, really bad code base. And we wanted to show them, you know, how bad it was, but they're not technical. So we didn't want to just say, oh, you know, yeah, 
this code is bad, this code is bad, this code is bad. So I put it all into a markdown document like this. And I actually copied and pasted all of their script includes and business rules that were bad into the document itself so that they could see you've got like 10 pages here of a business rule that is repeating itself over and over again because somebody didn't write this code correctly. And it really helped us sell the point to that customer that this isn't just a saying it's a jumble and it's a mess. They can see it with their own eyes that it's a mess because the documentation was super concise and, and able to communicate that to them. So that was really useful. There's one thing that I didn't show in here as well. Let me get it down to one page here. I'm gonna get it down to the paragraph page because I wanna show you that you can create tables really easily. I wanna say it's bar header one and then another bar header two and then is it i might have to look at the documentation on this which might be actually a good good way to do this with you guys on the phone here it is so to create a table all you have to do is the bar i, I didn't do the spaces i guess oh no i know what it is so if i come down here and now do another bar and another bar dash and another bar i can format that and it's automatically going to create a table for me and under that, we just need to add the bars for data, right? So, you know, cell one, cell two, format, and we've created a table just like that. It's really cool. I'm sorry. Yeah, cell three, cell four. I need to put a space in between these two. But yeah, so look how easy you can create a table too. Like, you know, in, in Word, you have to insert that and pretty static is what you can do and it's difficult to add lines. And again, this is just the styling of this one flavor of markdown. This is a different rendering in Dillinger here, right? So where it has all of this markdown over here, which is all good examples. As soon as you open Dillinger, it comes to this, by the way, it gives you all these examples over here and what they look like over here, but it's using a completely different rendering engine here. So it looks different. You see things I showed you like links, they're just that easy and just really readable over here on the left, even though this is the raw markdown. Does anyone have questions? Not a question, but I just wanted to add to your point, David. You know, after I got with you on what you did for that one customer, I actually mm -hmm. used this type of format for a different customer for KT sessions. Those went really well. So documenting code that we wrote for them in a way that they could understand. Oh, nice. That's great to hear. I, and I'm glad you said that because now you made me remember what I wanted to do. I wanted to come into code. I told you I'd show you what that markdown all in one is the, the plugin or the extension that I'm using here in Visual Studio Code. It allows you, we're going to come into the, um, we're going to look at the preferences real quick for markdown all in one. And I turned this off because I didn't want it to do it during the show or during the sort of show and tell but we can say print current document to HTML when file is saved, just like that. And now when we go to save, it's automatically gonna pump it out to HTML. I wanna do that here with the style guide just to show you how good it looks as HTML. Okay, so now we have an HTML, there it is. So style guide, JS HTML got saved right here. We can open that up in a browser and there it is. Super pretty. We can take this now as raw HTML from the actual document there and put it into a knowledge article. And we have a beautifully formatted HTML document in our knowledge base, just like that. I think it's super useful. I use it a lot anytime I need to document something for the customer that, you know, if they don't have a preference to say that they want it done in Word, or they want it done in something else, I at least pitch this to them and say, hey, we have this really cool thing called Markdown that you can do documentation on it. It's a lot more dynamic and, and easy to maintain. And a lot of times they go for it. So I think it's a, a good tool to have in your back pocket for sure. And I think that concludes. Does anyone have any more questions? Hey, David. So this sounds like a great tool. So you're proposing this Markdown as more of a project-based tool that developers and other people can use but are you also proposing it as a standard for all of our repository? I wouldn't say a standard for all repositories. I would just say for our living documents, let's just say it's something that I think we should consider. 
definitely something we should consider because in the grand scheme of things, I think it's a lot easier once you've learned it, and, you know, and the learning curve is very, very small. It's not big, but once you've learned it, it's, it's much, much easier to work with than a Word document or something similar. And you can export to PDF as well. So if you need it to be something other than HTML, you can export to PDF. And the site, the top one, the Markdown Guide, it's great. So here it is. It goes into, you know, showing you Dillinger and how to use Dillinger. It shows you what it's good for. So websites, documents, notes, books, presentations, email. Oh, there's an app too. Okay, real quick. So I use this note app called Bear, which is for Mac only. And it's really great. So it allows you to do markup within the actual note taking. So you can see this is an H1 that automatically gets created on the creation of a note. I can, you know, make lists just as easily as doing a one dot. And this is a list item, you know, just like that. And it renders it in real time. You never really see the markdown here. So if I wanted to make something bold here and put the asterisks around it, you know, it will show the asterisks, but it also bolds the, some of them render them a little bit differently. See that's bold is now one asterisk here. So yeah, that's the caveat. Let me say that, that this bear one uses a slightly different syntax than the actual official markdown does. So, but, but it is a flavor of markdown that you can use in your list. You can do code blocks here within this note, you know, taking notes. Like if you're, I use this for everything. So if I'm on the phone with the customer and I need to note something and I need to make it super important, I'll bold it and do that really easily without going into crazy formatting pages. So very useful tool. Hey, David. So you mentioned that you use this for your technical like documentation. When you give this to the customer, do you give them the .md file or do you export in PDF for them? I'll export it typically to HTML and, and get them to okay. use it. So yeah, so that they can put it in their knowledge base. If they can't take it as HTML, I'll do it as PDF. PDF's a little trickier because you have elements that want to go from page to page and, you know, PDF tries to make you go page to page. So there's a couple options. I, I don't have the examples here with me, but one option is to make the PDF all sort of like one long document, like you would see a website because th yeah. there's the option to do that. But the other option is you can add page breaks within your markdown. So you can specifically say, I want it to break at, if it can break at, I should say, I want it to break at certain elements. And so you make it break at smaller, I guess, smaller chunks of elements of your document. And that way it'll fill in where it can and actually looks like a document at the end where it's broken down by page. A little more okay. difficult though. It, it wants to go to HTML, right? I mean, that's the path it wants to go to because I think that's the one these days that's used most often when it comes to online documentation. Got it. So, so the use case is that uh, if, if the customers if you're proposing, okay, we can do this in this format, but it has to be in the knowledge article. So mm -hmm. it can't be like a Word document. And then if they're mm -hmm. okay with that, you would do it in this format. Yeah. And I export it as HTML and just do a copy paste of HTML right into their HTML field for knowledge. Yeah, it's awesome. I like it. Uh, I mean, I use Bear to from your recommendation. I notice yeah. there's similarities, like just doing yeah. both. It's, it's super quick to do it. So yeah. that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I'm glad, I'm glad this is helpful. Well, then I guess that will end the presentation. I hope everyone enjoyed it. If anyone has any questions, please reach out. Everyone have a great Thank one. You.